ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम माय बाउ टू द लॉर्ड वसुदेवा हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई लाइक टू रीड अगेन फ्रॉम द गीता दिस इज अ क्यूरियस पैसेज Most people think that scripture is very solemn and staid and uh, stiff shirted and so on but actually there's a good humor in it too and all the masters I've known and I've known a number have all had a good sense of humor Grand Sahib Bhishma that remember Bhishma represents the ego Grand Sahib Bhishma then glorious and powerful among the gurus anxious to encourage the wavering Duryodhana blew his conch with a mighty blast now the meaning of this is very esoteric when you are in meditation and uh, you gradually calm your mind you know you reach the point where you don't need to breathe at all and you don't breathe there are techniques to help you to learn not to uh, to learn to go beyond breath one of them is to watch the breath just let the breath come in and out of the nostrils as it will you can watch it in the nostrils at the first of all you'll feel it here then feel it up at the root of the nose uh, when krishna speaks of concentrating at the root of the nose nasikagram he means here the sense the beginning of the nose the nose doesn't begin here it begins here so the beginning of the nose is the point between the eyebrows and uh, you can think of that that uh, air coming past that flow past that point here at the point between the eyebrows stimulating that point of concentration or you can think of it as coming up and down the spine it, up with the inhalation down with the inhalation and as the breath comes in mentally say hong h o n g and as the breath goes out mentally say so s a u aham saha means i am he and this is the mantra based on that so hong is uh, often expressed but so hong is the uh, expression that comes when you've known god hong sa is to reach god this is subtle and i'm not going to go it into in, into it in depth but hong with the incoming so with the outgoing and gradually you find in watching the breath that the breath becomes still until finally you're not breathing at all you don't even need breath until you create carbon by movement by tension by restlessness and then you have to breathe again the breath is just a mechanism of the body to keep it supplied with oxygen but when you have that oxygen you don't need more when you've got yourself completely charged with oxygen you can go beyond breath yogis have been able to go beyond breath for very long periods of time that is to say like sadhu haridas was buried underground for 40 days and at the end of that time he was brought up they they pronounced him dead because his heart wasn't beating or anything he came back to life you don't need these things you don't need your body if you're strong in the spirit but watching the breath is a means of helping to calm the breath and finally to go beyond the breath so this technique of hong so is a very good technique as i said some people say so hong or so hum it doesn't really very much matter but the there is a an upanishad called hong so upanishad this is the real mantra of the vedas so anyway um when the mind becomes very still and the body becomes very still and the breath starts to become calm suddenly the ego will come in what about me what about me and then you find and this is what this happens in the next next uh, part of the then bish bishma blew his conch with a mighty blast <sighs> that's the conch shell of bishma the ego the breath itself and then in the next stanza a very interesting passage where it says then these there followed at once a great tumult as conscious as conscious kettle drums tabors small drums horns sounded in a mighty uproar of support well this is all humorous you must understand that great saints have fun in their teaching they're not just solemn but what he's saying is that once bishma has blown his big conch of the ego which is the breath then all the world sounds come in and the sounds of the body come in again and everything you know, the world begins to assume its own importance and uh, 
the interesting thing is that then the other side comes in and tries to assert its own power and it, uh, it, it, they too blow their conscience. Well, we'll go into that one next time. But the important thing is that uh, you calm your body. If you want to know God, be still and know that I am God. You'll find that phrase in the Bible. Be completely still in your mind. To still your heart is the most important thing of all. As the uh, great exponent of yoga, Patanjali, said, the definition of yoga is yoga chitta vritti nirodha. Chitta means the feelings of the heart. When we can calm those feelings, when we can reach the point where we don't let anything excite us, it isn't that then you become apathetic. When you stop having likes and dislikes and attachments and uh, repulsions and so on, then suddenly you find that you have a bliss. Your nature is bliss. When you calm that tumult, you don't suddenly become dull. Rather, the only truly happy people in this world are those who live more in themselves. And those who are truly ha truliest happy or happiest are those who are in the thought of God and in the thought of His bliss. When you have that bliss in yourself, then nothing really bothers you. People can insult you and you feel that, well, how nice of them to think of me at all and want to try to help me. And if they're really not trying to help you, it doesn't bother you. You just know that this world is made that way. This world is full of ups and downs. There's day, every day is followed by night and night is followed again by day and it just goes on and on. Some people will like you, some people will not like you. If nobody thinks anything of you, that's not very much of a compliment, is it? I'd say rather that if you have people who become your enemies, don't be their enemy. I remember this one fellow used to say, I don't know why I hate you, but I hate you. I said, I'm sorry, I can't reciprocate. I like you. But I couldn't help it, and apparently he couldn't help it. So let it be. I remember this one man who was just dead against me, and I said to him one time, you know, Jim, I could be the devil himself, and it wouldn't be your problem. He said, I know, I know, I don't so matter. It was all jealousy, envy. That's what motivates most people. I've accomplished things and they haven't. But what's the point in getting excited by other people's reactions? And don't do anything for their applause because wherever there's applause, there will also be excoriation. Live to please God. Live to do His will and be interested only in furthering His light in this world. This world is a battle between the demons of darkness and the angels of light. We can put it that way. You can consider it metaphorical or not. I myself take it more literally. But the fact remains that it is a struggle between light and darkness. You struggle on the side of lightness. Don't be one of those wishy-washy people who sit in be between and don't do anything. Don't be one who says, oh, I just want peace of mind. I don't want to be bothered. Of course you're going to, uh, if you want to advance, you're going to have opposition. Don't worry about it. Just love God. Sooner or later you will find that when you wake up from this life, you'll be in a world of such joy that nothing can compare with it. Joy to you.